I have to win a championship with South Dakota State, but I have a short time frame to do so, and I'm not sure if it's going to be possible. This video is a part of a three-team rebuild series, and if you missed parts one and two with North Dakota State and Montana, go watch those two first so you don't get any spoilers. Anyways, for those of you that have already seen them, I won it all with the Grizzlies in six years and with the Bison in seven, so Montana is in the lead, and due to that, you all that picked them in the poll would be entered into the jersey giveaway, but if I win a championship in six or less seasons with the Jackrabbits, while also finishing with a better all-time record than 29 and 48, those of you that pick South Dakota State will be the winners. It all comes down to this final rebuild, and I have a new strategy. Our roster is going to be completely empty going into the next year, and I know it's not going to be great for longevity, but I'm going to chase after Juco so we can be good sooner rather than later. By week three, I've been able to find all the guys that I want us to pursue and go after, and there's only a few people on here that aren't Juco, so I'm excited to see if we get them all. Well, it looks like mid-season we got our first wave of commits as all six of these guys are now going to be Jackrabbits, and I honestly don't even know how to describe how well it's going near the end of the year. Just so many high overalls on this board. So going into the offseason, we have the 35th best recruiting class. It's time to see if anybody wants to transfer in to play for Adam Vinatieri, and nobody does. But he only has four scholarships left anyways, and I'm hoping he lands these four players. It is time for the moment of truth, and there's only one yellow name. So we get the linebacker, but we got out recruited by USC, LSU, and Bowling Green. Now I will say I'm a bit surprised at how low our recruiting class is ranked, but the game doesn't understand the value of all these JUCOs because they're super high overalls, and if we win a championship in five seasons, it's going to be because of them. Another thing I'm doing that I haven't done in the previous rebuilds is I'm going to redshirt all of these players that I can in their first year here, and that probably means we're guaranteed to go 0-12 in season number two, but when you look at our roster, most of the starters would end up being walk-ons anyway, so I want to save a year on all of those JUCOs for when all of the roster holes are finally filled. Well, we might be projected to finish at the bottom of our division, but we are a 30 overall team, and we make FCS Southeast look like 2019 LSU. This is the only game we even have have a slight chance of pulling off and we get beat by 40. So my sole focus is recruiting and this year I've found 16 different guys that I'm targeting and if we're able to get all of them it'll fill all the holes on the team and set us up for the future. As they begin to commit you'll notice that not all of them are Jucos and to my surprise we upset our rivals North Dakota State. Considering the final score of some of these other games I can't believe we pulled it out but I'll certainly take it and all of these guys are on a visit this week so we might as well see how the sim against Wyoming goes since we did beat the Bison we lose by 68 and I don't understand how any of these players went to that game, watched us score zero, and decided to commit. We also beat Montana, and I don't know how, but it turns out redshirting everybody was a great idea because even though we're a 30 overall team, we're still winning games. Unfortunately, not everything was great as we lost out on both of these recruits to bigger schools, but we're still going into the offseason with a top 40 class, and we got five-star Antonio Williams, who is most likely going to be our championship quarterback. What's crazy is 2-10 and 10 is the best record I've had with any of the three schools in these rebuilds, and I ended up redshirting everybody. So we're on pace to win a championship the fastest, especially because Adam Vinatieri didn't get fired. The only thing that could really hurt us is if players transferred out, and it looks like one of our linebackers is going to. That's a tough loss, and transfer Brandon Campbell isn't going to replace him. But if this offseason period goes the way I'm hoping it will, I'm not going to miss him too much. And it definitely did, as we got both Brad Grigsby and John Hodge. This group of prospects is also rated a lot better than last year's. And like I said, there are still going to be some Jucos in the mix, but there's also a lot of guys that aren't, so they're going to be with the program for a lot longer. I gotta say, I'm really excited to see how many wins this team can get in Season 3, and I'm thrilled to see that there's an FCS school on this schedule. The turnaround on our team overall has been insane, as we went from a 30 overall to a 79, and in our first game at Arizona State, I'm not expecting us to win, but we only lost by 7. That gives me a ton of hope, as against FCS Southeast, we're gonna win by 21, and it really helps that Adam Vinatieri has yet to be fired. After spending quite a bit trying to build this recruiting board, I think I found enough prospects that would actually improve our team the following year, and I have to say, I am a little worried about what happens after the Juco's graduate. Our first Mountain West game is at San Jose State, and I'm expecting us to lose this one, but I don't mind because there is a couple conference games I know that I'm going to jump into, and that's at home against San Diego State where people are visiting. We might be 1-4 right now, but I'm ready to show off our home stadium and also use Kevin Newby, the Juco junior quarterback that's going to be the starter for a couple of seasons. It's taken a little bit, but here in the second quarter, I think we're finally going to be able to get into the end zone, and I'm just going to hand it off to Roger Kane, who's going to fight his way in. I'm almost certain the Aztecs are going to respond back, but to end the half, I've driven down the field and we're going to bust it in. I wasn't sure if we'd be able to keep up or not, so the fact that it's only a three-point game at this point's amazing, and we're getting the ball back as well. This is a massive third and 12. I'm hoping we can go ahead and pick it up. The tight end is going to get open, but he's going to be a bit short, so on fourth and one, I'm going to go with the run, and on the counter, we are going to get it. I was kind of hoping this was the final drive of the game, but I think we're going to score way too quick for that, and that'll put the game in the hands 
of our defense, but I feel like we can lock up and on this halfback screen, I'm going to miss the tackle. You've got to be kidding. That was embarrassing. And next time I will just let the computer do it for me, but they're still going to be stuck on a fourth down. So we just need this to go our way. It's just going to be an outside run handoff and we're out there. He's down. I don't think that's the best play call when you need three yards, but now all we need to do is run down the clock for a few plays and newbie is going to break free. Let's go ahead and just take this one into the house. Your South Dakota State Jackrabbits just got their second win and Roger Kane had himself quite the game. That's exactly why I played the visit weeks because I got these four to commit and we're 19 overalls better than our rivals. So I feel like we should be able to win this game through Sim and that's what we do. It might seem like a long shot, but we could still very well win the Mountain West in season three. But I can only jump into one more game because I can only jump into two games a year if you all have watched other episodes and we're losing to Wyoming. I want to be upset, but now we play against Montana and I know this should be a free win. So I guess we can bounce back against them and we lose by nine. I don't understand that, but at least I've won every recruiting battle and we just got Roman Jones and Dan Butler. The best part is all these guys should commit during the Air Force visit week. And I know you all see a lot of high overalls on the board right now that are not JUCOs. If we lose another game, we're not going to be eligible for a bowl and Colorado State confirms that. So we have nothing to lose and no pressure versus Air Force. If we win, we'll get more talent for the future. But with two minutes left in the second quarter, we've still yet to score. So that's not looking very likely. I mean, at least Scott Miller fought in there, but the offense has been really disappointing. And the only thing continuing to give me hope is our defense as Grisby gets the interception. That's the freshman that we had just recruited. And remember, the main goal for this rebuild is just to win a championship in five seasons. But if it ends up taking six, we need the tiebreaker and that's all-time wins, which we have more than Montana so far, but we need to keep it up and we got to make a tackle. Every single game matters. And on this two-point conversion, there's just no pressure. We're going to knock it down, but I'm not quite sure why their quarterback tried to force it. Well, now we're down by four and this is a big fourth and five. I'm just going to flip it to the running back. Thank goodness he's going to pick it up for us. And now I'm just going to roll out, wait a second and find Josh Gordon on the slant. Hopefully our wide receiver, Josh Gordon, isn't going to be failing any drug tests. And I'm going to need him to come up big for us on this drive because we're trailing by four. There's two minutes remaining and our tight end's going to get open. He's going to truck a guy and that's 20 yards. We have moved it all the way inside the red zone, but the job isn't done and I'm taking a sack. So it is third and 15. A field goal is not an option. We need seven. I'm going to be able to loot out of the pocket, not get the throw off. And each win matters so much. So we need to pick this up. The out route is not going to get open. And unless we have a miracle, Air Force is going to beat us. The only reason we're not out of it is because we had all of our timeouts. And no matter what, we should at least be able to get a Hail Mary to the end zone. We need to take advantage of each chance we have at a win. And I'm going to throw it up to our tight end, but it's going to be completely underthrown. And I thought that was our best chance at potentially scoring there. None of the visiting recruits seem to mind as seven more players ended up committing after that game. And even though we ended the year with an L to Utah State, I'm still on pace to do better with the Jackrabbits than any other rebuild before this. And hopefully Kevin Newby will have an even better senior year. Roger Kane will also be a senior and he did pretty well for a junior, but it's also kind of scary. All these Jucos aren't going to be with us for long. We've already gotten seven wins through the first three seasons though. And only one guy's graduating because I wasn't able to redshirt him. This guy wants to transfer in, but I'm going to politely reject him. And the reasoning for that is I think these six guys are a better fit for our last six scholarships. We ended up finishing with the 14th best class in the country. And I'm very proud with how this one turned out because we have so many guys that are up in that 77, 78 overall range. All of the JUCOs that I recruited in that first season ended up having a very good off season, but I'm still going to redshirt some of our best players because I feel like next year we're going to have an even better chance at winning it all. After seeing the schedule we'd be going up against as well, that feels like the right decision to make. And it looks like the game thinks we'll be a top 15 team in a couple of seasons. For this year, we're still projected to finish fifth in our division despite being the highest overall team. And it sucks that we had to start the year at number five, North Carolina, because it was always going to be a blowout. Now I would like to win the Mountain West. So I'm jumping into our first conference game. And I understand that I redshirted half of the offensive line to be better next season, but I still have plenty of time in the pocket. It seems like we're going to open up the game by scoring on our first drive. And we've already stopped San Jose State once. So I'm confident that we're going to be able to do it again as they just took a check down. Now, one thing I just thought of is I don't know why I'm starting Kevin Newby because I could be developing a younger quarterback with a better arm. So Antonio Williams is going to see the field for the first time. He might be one overall worse than Brian Jones, but he has a much better arm and he is left-handed. So now that I've realized that, I'm starting to regret my season just a little bit, but Carter's going to break away from one tackle. We're going to get a block and our tight end is very quick. I wish he wasn't a senior. I'm pretty sure I said at the beginning of this rebuild, if we were ever going to win a championship, it would be with Antonio Williams. So even though I really don't like left-handed quarterbacks, I'm going to keep him in and he keeps killing it. To end the first half, we're looking to go up by four possessions and they sent the blitz, but we have Michael Vick Jr. back there. He can take off and take it in. Fast forward to the fourth quarter. We're still up by 21 and San Jose State is going to score a touchdown, but they didn't get the onside kick. So Antonio Williams,
Williams is going to start his career with a big win. I'd say those stats are pretty good for a debut. And I know without our coordinator boosts, he's only an 81, but he's going to be our quarterback next season when we try to win a championship in just five years. I'm also going all in on recruiting with all of these high overalls on the board. I think we're going to be able to land pretty much everybody you see right now. So momentum is starting to build up and at UNLV, we are going to lose by 25. We all know that was not ideal because we're also going to get our backs blown out by Baylor. And these out of conference games have been brutal because Appalachian State is also a very good team. It's hard to believe that we are sitting at two and four right now, but we should end up destroying our rivals. And if this result doesn't go our way, I'm not going to have any words. What is going on? I'm going to need to step in to help this team when everyone visits against Wyoming. But is this quarterback switch the reason we're not doing well? I guess it is as he's already thrown 10 picks, but he needed to get it out of his system at some point. And I'm never going to regret investing with the youth with stats like this. Hopefully against the Cowboys, we can get in a groove again, but it's not looking good from the jump as they've already scored a touchdown and thankfully we are going to hold them to three. It would be even better if their kicker stunk, but he drills it down the middle. And there's so many seniors on this offense, so you think we'd be playing well, but they just continue to drop it. One thing I've learned about playing this game all the time, especially on Heisman mode, is there's some that EA just doesn't want you to win. There's a mismatch though, and Josh Gordon drops it. To make matters even worse, Antonio Williams got hurt on that play. So senior Kevin Newby is back in the game. He's going to be able to elude the pressure. I'm going to find Scott Miller, who still cannot catch. This has been such a painful game, but our defense is keeping us in it, and I'm going to roll out and finally score a touchdown. So even though it's not deserved, all we need is a stop to have a chance to go down and take the lead. We should have had the sack there, and thankfully that throw was off the mark. We've definitely seen EA let that stuff fly before, but they're still going up six, and with three minutes left, they still have their one possession lead. We've traded touchdowns back and forth. I'm going to try to throw this ball up, but clearly everybody on this team needs new gloves or something, and of course the quarterback is going to get drilled. The computer is literally running glitch blitzes on me right now, and with three timeouts remaining, we only have one more chance to stop Wyoming and get the ball back. I want to commit to the run here on third down, but that was always risky, and of course our corner gets toasted, so they're guaranteed to get at least eight points on us, and if we stop them here, we won't have much time left, but they went with the pass, and my user's just not quick enough to get over there. All the recruits that were on a visit left very disappointed, and if we lose again, we can't make a bowl game. Despite being embarrassed, I guess all these guys still want to play for South Dakota State, besides the one that wanted Vanderbilt, and no offense to them or anything, I just think we'll be better. We should be able to take down winless Montana, and if we can somehow win these final three matchups, we would make a bowl, but I just don't see that happening. Colorado State rails us, and I was hoping we'd at least be Air Force, but instead we're sitting all the way down here at 3-8, and eight. and to wrap it all up at Utah State, I think we know what the result is gonna be. If recruiting wasn't going so well, I would be devastated, but this failure of a year let Antonio Williams get some much-needed experience, and it sucks we have to say goodbye to Roger Kane, along with most of our other top receivers, but we have some other guys that'll step up. Honestly, I wish this Josh Gordon was capable of failing a drug test or two, but because he wasn't, Adam Vinatieri might get fired, and I can't believe they've still kept him around up to this point. Right when we want to go into a championship season, we have two players that want to transfer out, and all of these guys graduating as well, but the Jucos did serve us a good purpose. Ten wins through the first four seasons is four more than we had with Montana up to this point, so as long as the recruiting stays this good, we're on pace to do this rebuild faster than the others, but even with this great class, I don't trust them in the game sim because you'll lose games that you should never. Anyways, this roster didn't end up turning out as good as I was hoping it to be, so we probably won't win it in season five, especially since I see number three Texas A&M on our schedule. Once again, we're projected to finish fifth in our division, which is disrespectful for an 86 overall, but literally nobody sees us as serious contenders until next season, so we should just shoot to get at least six wins to stay ahead of Montana, and against Tulsa, we're going to win by three. Mountain West Conference play starts against UNLV, and we win that one too, but now there's this game against Texas A&M. I already know we're not going to win it, even if I jump into it. They're just so much better than us, so my hope is we win out and sneak into the playoffs with one win like we were able to do with Montana. That means we have to beat Missouri, who has a 99 overall offense, but luckily, at least we get to host it. Since Antonio Williams is a junior now, he should be much better, and he's going to find Dan Butler for a first, but it's been taking our wide receivers a long time to create separation, so I'm going to assume that's our weakest point on this team. I rarely do it, but I'm going to run the option here. I just have to make sure I don't make the wrong read, and Antonio Williams is going to take it in. I mean, our defense wasted no time in giving up another touchdown, but at least we're moving the ball on offense, and look at Webb go. He has some speed on him. I don't even remember recruiting Terry Webb, but I'm going to run the option again, and this time I'm accidentally going to pitch it. You've got to be kidding. Wait, the ball's on the ground again. Please pick it up. Make up for my mistake. Come on. I should have known better than the pitch it there, but I did anyways. At least we're going to hold them to three, and hopefully we can score a touchdown to end the first half. I don't like that our starting halfback is there at kick returner as well. It means he's going to be tired, but you know what? He is quick, and look at him getting to the outside. Please don't get caught. Terry Webb is impressing me, but I wish he just had a little bit more speed on him, even though I know he's already quick, and at least Antonio Williams is taking off. I mean, besides him being a left-handed quarterback, he makes 
this offense a lot more versatile. And I hope I have a laser right here. Robinson comes away with it. Look at that speed. I did not realize Steven Robinson had it like that. But we are finally starting to shut down Sam Horn. And here on third down, I am just so bad. My user is literally the worst. What we need to do is make sure they don't get in on third down. And I am all over the ball there. But who is on that side? We got really lucky because he is just a little bit short here. And Missouri is not playing aggressive. If we went out, I could see this team in the playoffs. So that's why I'm taking this game so seriously. And look at that. We have an open receiver in Robinson again. He might be our number one guy. I had never seen his name before these past few plays, but he has been killing it. And now we're stuck inside the five yard line. I'm going to step up in the pocket. And you know what? I'm just going to bomb it up to Steven Robinson. He toasted the corner on that side. He's not even close to him. That's why I love having a quarterback with 95 throw power, but that play didn't even feel real. It makes me just want to take my time, step up in the pocket and go for it again. I had it and look at that cannon. That's incredible. Now, obviously we're not going to catch everything, but at the end of the day, it would be extremely hard to blow this lead. So I'm thinking we're going to win. Antonio Williams was literally insane for us. And did we really just beat an SEC school by 22? That result alone is starting to bring some attention to our name, but we're still very far away from being inside the top 25 and against North Dakota State, we are going to win. So I'm happy about that. But now we have to take on Boise and I wish they were better this year because I wanted to play at their place. It would have been a waste to use the last game I can jump into on that one though. And how did we just get pounded by Wyoming? It doesn't even make sense. They're a 75 overall team with three wins, but now we have no shot at the playoffs. And all I'm going to say is we better not lose at Montana. It was close because Antonio Williams only had a 38% completion percentage, but a win's a win. And now we're playing for a spot in the Mountain West Conference Championship. Colorado State is eight and one this season. And more importantly, they're ranked inside the top 25. So this could be our biggest win in the dynasty. And I kind of just want to throw the ball up now that we have a quarterback with such a big arm. How did Watson just come down with that ball? I'm just a bit speechless because he is not the build for making plays like that. But you know what? I will definitely take it. And if our 5'11 receiver is going to catch balls in double coverage, I'm going to target him. Now it might be an interception, but it's the thought that counts. And we're still going to get a stop on third and 24 because there's no way they were picking this up. That turnover caused no harm at all. And they are locking us up in man coverage. I can't escape the pocket. I'm going to fumble it away and they pick it up for a touchdown. Wonderful. Maybe we're better off if I just sim the games that we really need to win. But you know what? I like the fact that I can play this game and they can still stop me. It wouldn't be very fun if I was so good to where in every single game we played, it was just a guaranteed win. You never know what's going to happen. And I think we're going to get a goal line stop here. It's third and goal and their quarterback's taken off. It's over. Nice try, bud. But you're only going to get three for your team. And it's honestly been a pretty low scoring game, but I'm not going to complain about it. These plays aren't working. So that's why we're struggling. But I still feel like we're in control of it. I'm going to roll out in the pocket, miss the sack and on the run. What a play. I am a little scared because our stud quarterback that just pulled off that miracle is no longer in the game with five minutes left, but it turns out he only has a strain calf. So we'll just rely on Terry Webb to punch this one in for us. Here on third and goal, I'm just going to hope that our tight end will hold onto the ball and he doesn't. So I'm going to have to be smart and just take the field goal. If we can hold the computer here on third and six, I'll be very interested to see what they do. They're going to end up taking the check down and you'd think it'd be much smarter to just take their three, but they're being aggressive and it's going to pay off. The refs are reviewing it though. So I'm just going to hope he somehow didn't get his feet in, even though it's very obvious he did. And of course the play stands. Even with three timeouts, they are going with the onside kick. We're going to recover it and just dive to the ground. So as long as we pick up this third and inches, we're going to get our biggest win of this dynasty. And that is going to be game. If we went out, we're in the Mountain West Conference Championship, but we all know that that is no guarantee with this game sim engine and Air Force could really mess some things up for us. Please get the result. How does this happen? We had such a good season just for it to all crumble away at the end. And I'm going to assume we didn't make the conference championship. I might as well check. And how are we at the top of our division? Evidently, Colorado State lost one more game and they beat Air Force, giving them another loss. We don't deserve to be here, but I'm going to play it. And I love that we also get to be the host. It's always a little risky to go for it on fourth and two on this side of the field, but I saw a matchup I like. That ball is put perfectly on the money and it is dropped. Sometimes I just don't understand this game at all. They're breaking free, going into the end zone. And I'm just glad that our defense is keeping us in this game. We should have a tackle there, but he's going to break free and there's no way that he just did that. He's going to take this all the way to the house and we are going to give up a touchdown when we should have had a stop. So as you can imagine, I am very frustrated with how we've opened it up and that's going to be knocked down. With two minutes left in the second quarter, I think we're going to finally score on this counter. Come on, Webb. You just got to be a little bit quicker than everybody else. I don't know how you didn't pick up the first down there, but we're still going to take it in. And just know I'm not going to compliment the defense because it didn't go well the last time I did it, but it's third and eight. We should get a stop and thank you. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like any of that's going to matter, but I guess if we hold them to three here, it's still only a two possession game. So we just need to snap back into it and make a comeback because I'm getting a little impatient 
impatient. My goal here is just to roll out and throw it up. Nobody's open, but I don't really care. I'll throw it up to Dan Butler, see what he can do, and that is a head top catch. I'm not sure what we're feeding our receivers over here at South Dakota State, but I'm not going to question it. And here on third and 12, we really need to keep them out of field goal range, which we might have done, but they've sent the kicker out there anyways, and he has a very strong leg. Not the ideal ending to the third quarter, but at least we're still in it, and on this second and long, I can't even get the throw off. Well, it's probably not a good sign when Brian Jones is out there. The backup throws an interception almost immediately. So it's pretty much over. I sent the entire house on third and inches and they're just going to take the check down. That will pretty much seal it. It is all done. We deserve that trophy right there, but we did not take it home. And we made the Jimmy Kimmel Bowl against USC, but they're probably just going to rail us in a bowl that doesn't matter. So I'm going to sim it. And how did we do that? Evidently, I need to have a little bit more faith in Antonio Williams. And junior Terry Webb had quite the rush season. Dan Butler, our number one wide receiver, also ended up going for 10 touchdowns. And I think it's impressive that I never got fired with Adam Vinatieri in this dynasty. We're going into season six now, but if we win a championship this year, we'll have a better all-time record than Montana. So I'm excited to see what happens, but two of our key players are transferring out. To replace them, the game gave us these two bums, which I'm going to reject. And I didn't think this recruiting class was worth mentioning, but it finished ninth in the country. Evidently, when you land three five-star recruits, that ends up bringing up this rating very high. It is all or nothing this season. Championship or bust, the rebuild all comes down to this. And all of Adam Vinatieri's coach points are going straight into game management. I'm worried about what the schedule is going to be. Some of these seasons have had ranked teams on there, but I'm not seeing anybody good besides maybe Virginia Tech and a conference opponent. So I guess we'll find out if we have what it takes to win it all as we're coming in at a 93. That's a great overall for our conference, but we're not starting inside the top 25. So every game could technically be a toss up. I'm going to scroll through the entire roster just so you all can see the team we've built over this short time period. I think it's pretty good for what we had. But at the same time, there are some positions that I wish I did a little bit better at. We had Juco's graduate early and that really messed with this team. There's still a lot of good guys. I mean, the corners are good. The DBs are a little bit weak, but it's okay. Lastly, to wrap it up with special teams, we have two studs and I'm just going to sim through these first few games. The first one's against an FCS school. That should be easy. And no offense to Northern Illinois. One of my editors is a fan of them, but that was always going to be cake. And at Coastal, we are going to also come away with a three point win. Well, it turns out Fresno State wasn't as good as everybody thought because they already have two losses, but one of them was against number four, Georgia. They're an 86 overall, so I think I'm going to play it, but hopefully this doesn't feel like a wasted game later on. Only being able to jump in the two regular season ones is tough, but I've made my choice, and I got to say, they are definitely legit. Also, I can't remember the last time I pointed out something in the crowd, but the detail on the stadium is crazy, as you can see the dog prints over on the ramp. It makes me so happy seeing that attention to detail, but I think we're going to give up a touchdown, but the refs are saying it's not one, and it really is a game of inches. There's no reason they shouldn't just run a quarterback sneak right now, but they can celebrate their field goal over there because we're going to go down the field and get seven. It is fourth and seven as well, so I probably shouldn't jinx it. I'm just going to float this ball up. We have somebody wide open and he got railed. To be honest with you all, I could not have expected him to hold on to that football and it has taken us far too long to get onto the board. There's only a couple of minutes left in the first half, but thankfully we are finally going to make it happen. 10 to seven is a low scoring game, but at the same time, it's all good because it makes it extra easy for us to be right back in it. The fact that it's still this close makes me glad I chose this one to play because going into the fourth quarter, we're only going to be up one. They are pressing our guys, which I do find a little bit disrespectful. We have a quarterback with a cannon of an arm and Steven Robinson's going to burn you. They've taken their sweet time moving down the field, but now they have to clutch up. And why are they punting the ball back to us with three minutes left? It doesn't even make sense as with just a few first downs, it is going to be completely over. But you know what? I'll take it as we're going to improve to 4-0. Antonio Williams helped us get the job done. And due to that, we are now sitting in the top 25 for the first time. I'm going to be very disappointed if we lose this one at Virginia Tech. They're only an 83 overall, but we're playing well and against Boise, we're getting another win. I don't quite get how it happened over the course of two weeks, but we've flown up to number five in the polls. And I think the other game I'm going to hop into is going to be the one against Air Force. As I look ahead on the schedule, they're the only other team in conference play that has yet to lose a game. And as long as we keep winning, we're going to be battling it out for the division. These have been a little closer than I would have liked, but we're also going to take down Montana and Colorado State has been good in years past, but evidently not this season. I didn't even feel like I advanced that far into the season, but we are now sitting at the number one spot. And all I'm going to say is Air Force has now been terrible. This should end up being an easy win for us, but I got to hop in just to make sure. Well, with a minute left in the first half, it's definitely closer than I would have liked. But at the same time, you could argue that it's still very early on and on fourth and goal, I shouldn't have gone for it. Dumb mistakes like that are just going to keep them in it. And I do want to throw this ball up, but it's a bit overthrown. So our 5'11 wide receiver didn't get the opportunity to moss somebody, but we should still find
find the end zone. It's gonna be hard for me to ever forget that catch that Watson made, and I wish I could tell you all that this game stayed interesting, but Air Force just stunk on offense. It turns out when you force an option running team to come from behind and they can't just chew the clock, they struggle a lot. And assuming we win our last game, we're gonna finish the regular season undefeated. I told you all, it was smart to develop Antonio Williams, and the wildest part is he's in the Heisman race at number three. Between these three rebuilds, I think that's the first guy that's competing for one, and against Utah State, we get the win. So going in the conference championship week, we're still sitting at number one, and we're playing Nevada. Last year, we got embarrassed at home, so we cannot let that happen again, and on our first drive, we're gonna take it into the end zone. If I'm being honest with you boys, I feel like I do get a lot of goal line stops, so I'm excited to see what happens on this one. We have them on third and goal from pretty far back. We just need to get some pressure in, but we couldn't, and it's clear that Nevada came to play as we're now trailing by seven. I'm gonna try to escape the pocket I can, and I hope that didn't put us out of field goal range. This is a 59-yarder, and what a leg. That is exactly why you always make sure to have a 95, 96 overall kicker. I think they tried to go for the route bounce here. That should be an incompletion. And I always find it so disrespectful when they press our players because we have the fastest guys in the nation and that throw was just a bit underthrown. I don't know how Brandon Campbell came down with it, but I'll take it. And on this one, I'm just gonna try to extend it with my legs. I might as well throw it up. And of course he holds on to it. By midway through the third quarter, we still haven't been able to pull away, but you all saw some of the crazy catches we had in the first half. And this ball is gonna be floated perfectly on the money. Assuming we get this two point conversion, we are gonna be in business. And now we're gonna have them on a third and two. They threw it right to us. How did he not make a play on the ball? What is he doing? He was right there. I know I exaggerate sometimes, but this is not one of those situations. And the only reason I'm annoyed is because we're only up by seven. So this is a crucial drive. We have forced them to a fourth and inches where we should be in there, but it's still a bit too close for comfort. And I guess they want to make it easy on me by pressing. All I'm going to do is step up in the pocket and throw up a bomb to our fastest receiver, Terrence Robinson. You know, he's going to come down with it. You should know better. All it takes is a wide receiver with 95 speed and a quarterback with 95 throw power. And then you have one of the most unstoppable combos in the game, which I always love to abuse. No offense to Nevada, of course, but they're really stupid punting with two and a half minutes left. But I guess they just decided that they wanted to give up a bit early. This should have happened last year, but we got it done. And if we can win it all this season, this will be the best rebuild. Currently, Adam Vinatieri's 33 and 42, while I went 29 and 48 at Montana. And I thought that Grizzlies team was better, but Antonio Williams won the Heisman. So I guess I've put together a better rebuild so far at South Dakota State. It'll all come down to how the college football playoffs go. And hopefully in them, we can get Dan Butler over a thousand receiving yards. I don't know how my Wildcats made the playoffs again, but they ended up losing to Notre Dame in overtime. So if we beat Alabama, we'll play the Irish in the championship. The Crimson Tide are a 99 overall team. So I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to pull this one out, but at least we held them to a field goal on their first drive. And that kick was almost short. I guess Alabama really does never have a good kicker. But what was 67 doing is he just didn't pick up number 26 there. Due to the worst left tackle ever, we are already trailing 10 to zero on the Crimson Tide. But I think we're gonna be able to finally get onto the board. We're already down inside the red zone. I'm gonna float this ball up and what a great grab. You can never go wrong with the read option as this is gonna let us bust it in. And approaching halftime, everything has flipped as we are now going up by 11 points. It turns out the Crimson Tide really are not that hard to stop on offense. And with one second left, I am gonna chuck it up, see if we can come away with a miracle. I've stepped up in the pocket. For some reason, it went off the back foot and Butler comes down with it. But unfortunately, he couldn't break away. I don't know what it is about that guy, but he can make great contested catches and Watson is now getting out. He is so quick. I did not realize he had this much speed on him. My goodness, we are already gonna be up 28 to 10. And this is the highest rated team in the playoffs. So I cannot believe we are doing this well. Notre Dame might match up better with us though. So that one could be difficult. And I feel comfortable acting like we've already made the championship. We should be able to go up by like four possessions. That fumble worked. And I know it wasn't intentional, but he kind of just tossed it over to our receiver. I did not expect this game to go this way, but you know what? I'm not gonna complain about it. And instead, I'm just gonna enjoy the fact that we are in the championship. There's so many great things I can say about Antonio Williams, and all he needs is one more good performance. All he has to do is beat Notre Dame, and if he can do that, the Jackrabbits will win this three-team rebuild. I thought it was a pretty neat concept to try out, so if you all enjoy it, I'll do it again with other teams. Just let me know in the comments. And the more of these I do, the better I'm getting at strategizing and doing good in recruiting. We've got football season coming up as well, so I'm super excited for that, but I need to focus because it's fourth and three and I'm going with the fake field goal. I want to get the points on this drive and we hold on to it plus get in. Notre Dame cannot afford to get off to a bad start, but that's exactly what they're doing. And I think we're going to be able to score yet another touchdown. They just haven't done anything on offense that has really impressed me yet, but here they are picking up the third and six. And I'd argue that this is the most important drive of the game because they need to score to stay in it. And this should be an interception. Brewer comes down with it. I'm going to try to take it out. But as long as we don't commit any stupid turnovers, we are in a fantastic position and I'm going to give it to Terry Webb. I'm getting 
getting a little bored of running the ball, though, so I am going to sling it. And you know what? I'm going to throw this ball up to the backup tight end. Who is going to drop it? I really don't get this game. That could have been such a cool play. I'm going to try to bomb him again, though, and this throw is just going to be a bit under. That's okay. We still have a 14-point lead. We just need to make a tackle on this corner. Please do not let him return it. That's what I would consider an arm punt, and the run commit did work. So now it's 4th and 7 for the Irish, and it looks like we got him out of field goal range. Ideally, I'd love to end the first half with another touchdown, going up 21-0, to zero, and Julius just put three guys in a spin cycle. This guy is incredible. Our wide receiving core does not have a bunch of high overalls, but they definitely play like it, and that should have been a pick. We're not going to get seven. We're only going to get three, but we're still up three possessions, and that was the perfect first half. I mean, Notre Dame's going to begin the third quarter by trying to hit a field goal, and their kicker has it. But besides that, they really have not done much, and I'm just going to step up and throw it up. You know what? Let's moss this guy. Okay, that was a terrible idea. It's probably not a good thing that we've dominated so easily because now I I feel extremely comfortable. And if we keep getting stops, it won't matter. But eventually I got to focus in and get the offense going again, because we've been struggling. And on this third and 10, the halfback screen is not going to get the first. Going into the fourth quarter, we have a tough decision to make, but I think we should go for it on fourth and inches and we are easily going to pick it up. Honestly, I should probably just start turning two clock on and start trying to run it out. There's only like four minutes left and there's no way that we get this play to work. How did we pick that up? Antonio Williams has been such an amazing quarterback for us. I'm so glad we have him. And on the option, you know, I had to pitch it. I can't just let Terry Webb not get his. So who cares about running the clock out? We want to run the score up with more touchdowns. The fact that there is two minutes left and Notre Dame still hasn't scored a touchdown is absolutely insane. But I think I spoke too soon because they're moving the ball really well and there it is. I don't think I'm bad enough to choke it at this point, but I guess you never know. And we've seen some onside kicks go the wrong way. At least Watson knows how to hold on to those. So now it's time to run out the clock, make it official that South Dakota State's won it all. And if you chose them as the team that'll win the three-team rebuild, you're going to be entered into the jersey giveaway. What I like about this being a series is I'm actually able to pick the winner live before I post the video. And to my surprise, South Dakota State was picked the least amount of times. I'm going to go ahead and use this random number generator to figure out who wins the jersey. And shout out to Connor. Make sure you go ahead and check your email. And if you enjoyed this three-part rebuild series, I know for a fact that you're going to like this video even more.